Hello, good morning to everyone present here and a very warm welcome to all the Fletchers. We are very eagerly waiting to know you all and especially welcome to this new journey which you are ready to begin. Thank you to all the principals, vice principals, faculties and my dear students for being here with us today. This is surely a special day for all of us. I would like to extend my warm gratitude to all for giving me this beautiful opportunity to welcome all the freshers to our HSNC family. I, Ms. Amisha, faculty from B4 department at KC College, am honored and privileged to welcome you all to the third day of your induction program to this eminent institution, which is known for excellence in each and every single field. Now to guide us through the first step we have with us IC Principal of HR College and Dean of Faculty of Commerce and Management of HSNC University, Dr. Pooja Ramchandani. Dr. Pooja Ramchandani was the Vice Principal Degree College since July 2016 and has been associated with the college as a faculty in the Department of Commerce since last 20 years. She is a recognized guide for PhD in the subject of commerce from University of Mumbai. She has a very simple motto in life which is to create responsible student leaders who bring in positive change in the society. She's a firm believer that there is no alternative to hard work for achieving success and excellence. I request Dr. Pooja Ramchandani to give the welcome address. Thank you, dear Ami. A very, very warm good morning to all of you present here and especially a proud moment that an alumni of HSNC board and HR college, Mr. Tarun Anand joins us today. Uh, a legacy that HR and KC believes to create stalwarts, leaders, is an example that Tarunji is sitting in front of us and addressing our students. This one week induction program, the mind, in our mind, it was very clear. the business leaders across different sectors and will make them interact with our students through Zoom session and online YouTube session in such a way that they realize that this is what we believe in, in holistic development. And when we started, Tarunji said, five years of beautiful memories that he still remembers from HR college. I think this is what HR and KC believes in. HSNC University believes in. All the students are aware that this is a first batch. This is a second batch, sorry, second batch of first year students who are joining us with the ambitious plan of ours that HRKC and Bombay Teachers Training College will become a world class university, renowned university. We have a target in our mind that we want to be in the league of Oxfords and Harvards and Stanfords. Whenever HSNC University's name comes in, people should not just remember that it is in India. We should say we are best in the world. And with this, I welcome Tarunji. I welcome all my brand ambassadors of HSNC University, the young minds who have joined us today and hoping that some of them are sitting and listening to Tarunji with the plan that they will be another Tarun Anand's another uh, Karan Johars, another alumni will make us proud and come back to us few years later and say, this is what I had taken from HR and KC and HSNC University. So a warm, warm welcome to Tarunji and a proud moment that I'm welcoming my own alumni in this session to talk to, to interact with our brand ambassadors. We don't call our students students, we call them as brand ambassadors. So looking forward to Tarunji's session, a proud moment that I'm listening to my own alumni. It feels great that he has become a business tycoon, has started his own management school. A proud moment that students from here do not just go and do MBAs, but go and set up institutions where they allow others to do these skill-oriented programs would also request Arunji to tell them about this program, which they can join after our TYs. We always request HRIs and KCIs. Whenever you go, wherever you go, you only hire HRIs and KCIs. So with this small 
greedy uh, request to all the HRIs and KCIs that wherever you reach, you only promise us that you will, we will be little selfish where we say you only support us. But looking forward to your session and a warm, warm welcome, Tarunji, to HSNC University, to HR College and KC College Brand Ambassadors Interaction and Induction Program. Welcome, 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 sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to talk about the man of the hour, Mr. Tarun Anand. Mr. Tarun Anand is the chairman and founder of Universal Business School in 2009, India's first Green Bay School in Mumbai. He has an MBA from SPJIMR Mumbai and pursued executive education at Michigan Business School. School USA, Tuck School of Business USA, and IE Business School Spain. He has brought global best practices in management education to India through partnerships with leading global universities in UK, USA, France, Spain, Italy, Switzerland, Mexico, and Bulgaria. At 35 years of age, he became the youngest chairman and managing director of Thomson Reuters, South Asia, and director on the board of ANI, achieving the highest growth rate across. BRIC nations. Mr. Tarun co-founded and served as global head of strategy and head of Asia Pacific at FX Market Space. He invented FX Settle, a revolutionary FX settlement solution, which has won several international innovation awards in 2008. In 2005, he was promoted to global head of treasury to run a $2 billion business across 136 countries and was invited to Reuters group of CEO to join the Reuters Innovation and Venture Board. He has worked for Thomson Reuters in London, New York, Hong Kong, and Mumbai. Mr. Tarun has over 25 years of experience in financial services, banking, exchanges, and education, including working for Standard Chartered and HSBC. He is also a TEDx speaker and has spoken at leading industry conferences across North and South America, UK, Europe, Africa, and Asia. He was awarded the Education Evangelist of India by Great Place to Study in 2020 and selected as Global Goodwill Ambassador in 2018. He loves mountaineering and has scaled Mount Kilimanjaro and represented India in international rugby tournaments. Now, I would like to request Mr. Tarun Anand to share his kind words of wisdom and experience with all of us. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Ami. And uh, thank you, Dr. Pooja, for inviting me uh, and Dr. Bagla. Uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, emotional moment for me to be part of anything that uh, HSNC University. Firstly, congratulations on the university. It was about time that the best colleges in the South Mumbai got together to uh, create a world-class institution. So wish you a lot of success and uh, hope that uh, we can we can really shine in the world, and I'm sure because uh, I remember in my times HR uh, and KC were the colleges uh, one right to get into, uh, and so uh, it's great to see that that continues even uh, two and a half decades or nearly three decades. I, I sound very old uh, after I left, so it's great. Uh, so congratulations there. Uh, now to the learners, uh, the to the brand ambassadors, the future brand ambassadors of uh, HSNC University. Um, a warm welcome to you today. I know it's tough. We are living in these crazy times, which uh, one would never have imagined, but it shows your tenacity that you're here today, uh, that you are all willing to learn, willing to grow, willing to become uh, future leaders, which we will all be uh, standing on the sidelines, cheering you on this journey. But today is your first step into the world of HSNC. Uh, and uh, I am excited because it brings moments of uh, similar thoughts when I was in my first day coming out of school, you know, you're just wondering what is this entire college world all about? So the first thing for us was of course freedom, right? Getting that freedom felt great. Uh, making sure we didn't have to wear uniforms was great. So that was the initial wow factor. Uh, but I think the more important is the freedom to come, uh, you know, taking charge of your destiny. Uh, and, and this is where I say, you know, you're no longer a child. You're now just about to become an adult or some of you know, you're just about to become an adult. 
So now is that opportunity and that huge responsibility on your shoulders to take charge of your careers, to take charge of your future and build it step by step. So I'm going to take you through my journey, uh, a few instances in my journey which changed my career and my uh, learning in that process so that it can give you some kind of, um, you know, pathway uh, to say, okay, you know, even someone like Tarun could get in. Uh, and, and do this. And I had the privilege of, you know, uh, uh, you know, when I got off from my business school, SP Jain in Mumbai, if some of you are familiar in Andheri, uh, we were sitting in a, in a classroom uh, for our convocation and our dean, uh, Dr. Shrikant, your graduation. So, you know, I was always the, uh, you know, taking a plunge, a risk taker. So I put up my hand in the class. I'll be a CEO uh, in 10 years. Uh, and uh, I, I was, uh, you know, it's just on the spur of the moment. Guess what? 10 years passed and I failed. I did not become the CEO of an Indian company in 10 years time, but I became the CEO of a global company uh, in 12 years time. So Chalega, I hope uh, Chalega. Uh, and I was amazed because here I was running a $2 billion business in 136 countries. And I was just 32 years of age. It was just mind blowing. Me. Like it was just insane. Like, you know, the joy uh, to be put in that position. But, uh, and then it, I thought this can't get better. Right? How do you get this, right? It got better. At 33 years of age, I was promoted to the board of a $40 billion corporation. Suddenly I'm in a boardroom full of all these you know, Goras around me. And uh, I'm the youngest guy out there. And when I walked into my first board meeting, they were looking at me wondering, what am I doing here? Even I was wondering, what am I doing here? Uh, I thought, this is it, right? How can you beat this? At 35 years, I was the youngest chairman and managing director of Thompson Reuters, South Asia. Now, why am I telling you this story? It didn't start like this. I started my career, friends, as a door-to-door -door salesperson. Do you know what's a door-to-door -door salesperson? You know, when a door-to-door -door person comes and knocks, what happens? If I'm not mistaken, the door gets slammed on your face, right? Imagine that moment when you ring the bell of a building. And this is, I'm talking 25 years ago. And I was selling, this was when I was working for HSBC, and I was selling a liability product. Uh, and in those days, you know, there was no, uh, we firstly, mobile phones we'd never even heard of. But anyway, that apart, uh, you know, you, you couldn't even enter a building uh, because you're a door-to-door -door salesperson. You, you need to enter the building. Otherwise, what's the point? There used to be a board outside each door. And this was in breach candy saying dogs and salesmen aren't allowed. So you can't enter the building. That was the state. Somehow you use some trick to get into the building. Achha, now, when you uh, got into the building, you rang, you got to the security after some googly went to the top floor in the lift, starting ringing every bell. And I would say, good morning, ma'am, I'm from Nitish Bishu's heart. Good morning, ma'am, I'm from Nitish heart. Every door kept slamming on my face. Very upsetting. Achha, now, remember, this is door-to-door -door selling in residential areas. What does that mean? That means you have to reach the door at 6 in the morning, sometimes 6.30 in the morning, because after 8, nobody's there in the house, right? India, uh, in Mumbai, both husband and wife go to work. So if you don't reach by 8, 8.30, no one will So you start at 6.30, and then you, uh, start, uh, you start reselling at 7 p.m. So your working hours is 6.30 in the morning to 9.30, if you're lucky, in some business areas. And 7 to 11, that's your working day. So you would ring the bell. Imagine how, I, I'm sure your mom or uh, whoever opened the door would not be too happy seeing a bell ring at 6 in the morning, right? So I would say, good morning, ma'am. I'm from HSBC. God. So I was used to get very upset. How do I deal with this situation? So I would go into the roof and cry and say, yaar, main kahan pas gaya? Kyu kar raho ye? and then I came up with an idea. Can I tell you that idea? If I tell you that idea, please don't tell this to your mothers when you go back. I hope your moms are not listening. Anyway, jokingly. So I used to do, ring the bell, ding dong, the door would open. The mother would say, yes. I'd say, I'm from HSBC. Now I know the door is going to come and slam on my face. So you know what I used to do? I'd go and put my legs straight inside the door while she's slamming the door. 
So the dough would hit my foot and I go thud, 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 falling on the floor saying, ah, ah, I think I've hurt myself. Now, Indian mothers have beautiful hearts. They are feeling unki vajay se koi kirkya, unke door pe. I would fall and say, ah, can I just have a, 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 a glass of water and one painkiller if you don't mind. And if, you, if I can have a painkiller, I'll be on my way. Now, so she feels guilty so she'd go panika glass painkiller panika glass painkiller about to have the painkiller i say ah ma'am aaj maine breakfast nahi khaya you know jaldi subah nikla hu aur aap now all mothers know ki khali pet pe painkiller nahi khate khali pet pe it's not right right so i'm thinking just i'm thoda ek aadha gut book gut time mil jaye i'll have the painkiller and i'm out now she's committed to the kind act she has to follow through. She goes in a cup chai banta hai. Pine, banne mein paan saath minute. Pine mein paan saath minute. Tas pandra minute liya. Sale done. Mujhe do second nahi mil raha tha. Abhi mujhe pandra minute mil kai. Sale done. Then ghanti fall pain kela chai sale. Ghanti fall pain kela chai sale. Ghanti fall pain kela chai sale. One shot. Sometimes five to six pain killers. Now why am I telling you this story friends? In life. There are going to be many doors that are going to bang on your face. There are going to be doors that are going to slam on your face. Now, the important thing is not to get demoralized. The important thing is to either find a way through the door, or there's always another door. There's always another option in life, right? It's not the end of the world. And the pandemic has taught us how we need to be absolutely agile and adaptable and flexible. That if cheese need click on it, you see cheese keep try current it. That's what all the best companies in the world have done. And you're going to be commerce and management students. So you need to realize that at the end of the day, there's always another better way of doing things or make sure that you put your foot forward and say, I will try again. You've got to keep trying till those doors start opening. And then trust me, the world is going to be amazing because you will realize that if you do not give up, it's the marketplace that gives up. It's the business uh, starts flowing in, right? So that's just one lesson I wanted you to know that never say die, right? Never give up. Just put your foot forward. Try, keep trying. And there's always another door. Now, I told you about that. The second thing I'd like to share with you is about the concept of risk. How many of you take risks? Uh, I, if you were face to face, I would have got you to put your hand up. I know some of you on YouTube, some of you are on uh, Zoom. So I know all of you probably, uh, for some, it'll be like my average, when I ask this question to young people, uh, the highest I've ever got is 50%. The Normally it's 10 to 20%. And I guess in your generation, it might be higher, maybe 30%, 40%, right? Uh, but still, it's not 100%. Now, why is it that people don't break risks? And when I ask this question uh, in any audience, they say, you're a failure, right? What if I fail? What will my friends say? What will my family say? What will the world around me say? And I can only answer you with one uh, uh, simple way to uh, answer this question. When you risk, you fail, you learn. The person who takes no risks has no uh, failures, absolutely. So you're spared that, but you have no learning. And in this competitive VUCA world, I'm sure you've heard the term VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. In this VUCA world, if you do not fail and continuously fail, you're not accelerating your learning. And if you don't accelerate your learning, you cannot survive in this world that is so competitive, it is so volatile, every day comes a new challenge, right? How do you learn to deal with this challenge is by continuously taking risks and failing and learning. And if you're not willing to, to fail, you're not willing to learn, right? So you have to make this very clear thing. I'll give you another example. Let's say we go to this lovely uh, Oval Maidan right outside your college, uh, uh, right? And we say, let's take a walk. So I tell you, come, let's go for a walk on the Oval Maidan. We hold our hands, we go walking, la, 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 looking around, lovely, you know, trees, great grass, some nice flowers on the edges. Uh, and then I say, guys, just before we enter this garden, I have planted a hundred cobras, poisonous. You know what's going to happen to each one of you? You're going to say, oh, 
the slightest you hear, you're going to be like on high alert. Now, what just happened to you? I added risk, physical risk to you. And now you will hear things you didn't hear before. Your eyes will see things that you didn't see before. What has just happened? You've expanded your faculties, right? And it's been scientifically proved that we use less than 5% of the faculties that are endowed with us. 5%. Where is that 95%? It's in you. It's that potential sitting in you that you've about because you don't want to fail. Now, what it does is when you expand your faculties, you start seeing things, you start doing things better, you get pushed to the wall, and that's when the best out of you comes out, right? So if you really want to make sure that you are working at higher than 5%, 5% to sab karte. If you want to get to that 10 and 20 and 30 and even 80%, then you will see that the world will come to your feet, right? The world will come, but that's provided you're willing to take risks and willing to continuously fail. In fact, in, in, our, in our company, we used to have the saying, every day you need to celebrate your failures. Every day, right? Celebrate your failures because failures will give you learnings which will help you grow, right? So that's my second point. The first point was never given, never give up. There's always another option in life. Number two for me is risk taking, right? If you're going to take risks, you have the entire world in front of you. And if you take the safe option, then you're a bed chart, right? Then they are like bed bakliya, which go in one direction, like everybody's doing this. I, I would suspect that you are the brightest in Mumbai, Maharashtra, and in the country. And that's why you are the best university in this part of the world. You are bright. And if you're bright, then you need to start taking more risks, not less. Now, the third part I'd like to share with you is deadlines. Uh, I'm sure each of you will be given deadlines for assignments. There are deadlines for projects. There are deadlines for submissions. I'm sure you had this in your... In your um, uh, up to 10 standard schooling. Uh, now I'm going to tell you how a deadline, you know the word deadline, what does it come from? The concept was deadline. If you cross the line, you will die. Hum look kya sochte? Chalo yaar, thoda, nahin, ma ma I'll give it two days later, five days later, one week later, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work in the corporate business world, uh, in the accounting world, right? Where you are all hoping to become uh, successful in let me tell you my story of a uh, deadline. Now, I was in London based, uh, I was living in London. My boss was a Britisher called Mark Robson. Uh, we had, um, you know, four Brits, a couple of Americans, a German, a French, a Chinese, a Japanese, an Aussie, a Brazilian, and me, Indian, part of a global management team. So we used to do a quarterly review every uh, quarter to decide how do we grow our business. One such quarter, uh, one of our colleagues came up with an idea let's acquire this company in Frankfurt, Germany. So we said, huh, it makes sense. My boss, Mark Robson said, uh, wait a minute, uh, before we acquire, we need to do due diligence. Uh, some of you might have heard this term for those who not, it's very simple. When your father wants to buy a car, what does he do? He looks at all the models out there. He looks at the capacity, the engine performance, the looks, the styling, the accessories, the pricing, all of that, that's what he's doing. He's doing due diligence. So similarly, when you buy a company, you do due diligence. So uh, my boss said, who will do the due diligence? Uh, my good colleague, uh, uh, you know, Heiko Kassens from uh, Dusseldorf, uh, Germany, he puts up his hand. Sir, I'd like to do the due diligence because I come from the German market. I understand the entire uh, lay of the land. Great. Heiko, how long will you take? He said, two months, okay? Now, my good friend, Michael Bukok, who's in New York, uh, the Americans, right? The Americans are always uh, like to get under the skin of the Germans since World War II. So he says, I'll do the due diligence, but I'll take one month. So the German gets a little irritated. So they are having this argument. No, oh, no, we need to do uh, detailed analysis and this and that. And the, German, uh, the American is like, no, we got to go fast, fast. So they are arguing with each other. I put up my hand. I say, uh, I'd like to do the due diligence. Now, my name is Tarun, but in London, I was called Tarrant. And then when I moved to New York, they called me Tarun. And then when I moved to Hong Kong, I can't tell you, the Chinese killed my name. So what do you say? 
I said, Mark, I'd like to do the due diligence. How long will you take, Tyron? I said, two weeks. Now the German and American are arguing a month, between two months and one month. They jumped onto me. You don't know anything. You've come from India. You have no idea about the European market. You're going to mess up this deal. Da, 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 da. He, he pounced onto me. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. But my boss intervened and said, no, let Tyron do it. I said, okay. Guess what? That very evening, I took a flight to Frankfurt. I land, on Frank I land in Frankfurt uh, in the morning. And you know what is the first thought in my mind? I have never done due diligence. Right? So this is like I've taken a panda and I've never even done it. So I don't even know how to do it. So anyway, back to the wall. I worked like I haven't worked before, you know, 20 hours a day for two weeks. I just went crazy. And on the 14th day, I gave my boss, as promised, as per the deadline I had given him, I gave him my due diligence report. He looked at it and he found a mistake. And I said, I'm going to get fired. This is horror. This is harakiri. But he continued to read the, uh, the report and he said, but it's got enough for us to take it to the next level of financial due diligence. And, and, and you know, you could get into NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, and you then go into negotiations and close the deal. So I was like very happy, you know, I've beaten the Germans, the Americans, the Japs, because I was on top of the world. Anyway, I forgot about it. Six months later, I get a call from my boss who was in New York and I was based in London, Tarrant. Let's have dinner tonight. And I was like, sure, bo boss, we'll have dinner. Uh, um, where in London, right? Because he's in New York. I thought he must have been coming or he'll be. He said, no, in, uh, tonight in New York. And I'm like, I'm sitting in London in Canary Walk. So I run straight, buy myself a business class ticket, uh, go to Heathrow Airport, buy myself a suit because I don't know what's the occasion, fly to uh, John F. Kennedy shower. And I'm at the meeting at 7 p.m. that very day in New York. At the meeting, my boss opens a bottle of Don Perignon champagne and he says, congratulations, Taryn, to the new global CEO of the treasury business. Two billion dollar business. I was like, wow, you know, laddu poot I was like, uh, I, you know, I, you know what is the first thing that came to my mind? Ab hum goro pe raj karenge. Itne saal ne hamare pe raj kya. But I couldn't tell him he's a gora, he's a prate. How do I tell him that? So it was just unreal, right? And I said, why me? I asked my boss, why me? Because all my colleagues, remember that my Brits, the Germans, the French, all those guys, they were minimum 10 to 20 years older than me. They were minimum 10 to 20 years older than me. And friends, they were from Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, Oxford, MIT. I was from SPJ. Nobody has heard of SPJ there in New York, right? India, Harvard, Oxford, Chalta. And here they have picked me up. So I was wondering, I'm less experienced. I'm not from the Ivy League schools. Why me? He said, because you know how to smash the deadline. I said, what do you mean, Mark? If you hadn't taken that, put up your hand for a two-week due diligence, we would have lost a $25 million company to our competitor, Bloomberg. That's why you are ready for the world uh, of running this company and running this division, which is a $2 billion with 14,000 employees. And I was like, oh my God, wow. It didn't stop there. He says, you know, by the way, Taryn, you're living in London, you need to move to New York. I was like, you know what, uh, Mark, I'm very happy because I was living on um, uh, Bayswater Road, which is bang opposite uh, Hyde Park in Kensington Palace. So it's the most gorgeous place, right? If some of you have been to London uh, on the corner of Oxford Street and uh, Marble Arch. So I was like, Wow, why, do, why would I want to go to New York? He said, no, the job is in New York. You know, the CEO job, because you're going to be working on Wall Street and all the biggest hedge funds and all the prime brokers and all the big banks, JP Morgan City, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley are our customers. You need to be here. So I was like, uh, I was, he said, I sweetened the deal. I've booked a penthouse apartment for you in New York's Times Square. What? Penthouse apartment in New York's Times Square? I was like, Wow, you know, only uh, celebrities, right? CEOs, not even CEOs, um, uh, you know, Hollywood stars, only Hollywood stars stay in penthouse apartments in, in uh, you know, downtown or uh, Times Square, New York. And here I was getting such an apartment. I was like blown away. Uh, next year, my uh, my wife, uh, you know, says, Tom Cruise 
I mean, what a wonderful request, right? Imagine you guys, I have a Tom Cruise film. So on the following year, on my wife's 30th birthday, I got her to meet Tom Cruise. And, uh, you know, we shook hands, I shook hands, I introduced Tom to my wife. And then I've got a lot of musty in me, so I went behind. Uh, and I pushed my wife onto Tom Cruise and both fell. And then I got into so much trouble because the security swooped. And then I can't tell you what happened. But what I'm trying to say is the world will walk to your door, right? If you are willing to take risks, never give in and smash deadlines, the world will come to you. You don't have to go to the world. And then it was so amazing, friends, that when I finished, uh, you know, uh, when I done with my New York stint, I decided I want to go to Asia. My boss didn't decide. I said, Mujhe abhi gana Asia. So he said, where? Um, would you like to move to Tokyo? I said, no, you know, the language might be difficult. I wasn't so sure. I visited Tokyo many times. He said, do you want to go to Australia? I said, no, you know, Australians are racist. I had been to Australia several times and I was, it's the most racist country. So I said, not Australia. So he said, Singapore then, because that's uh, the big financial hub. I said, no, it's, uh, it's uh, Disneyland with the death penalty. So I choose Hong Kong, right? You can decide when you kick the world of the corporate world, you can decide. I, I went to uh, Hong Kong and there he says, you know, there again, a penthouse apartment with two swimming pools. I said, Ek hi chahiye. Nahi, two. Why two? Why two? Because just in case you get bored of one, that's the kind of life you live if you do these few things that I've told you, right? I'm reiterating. Never give in. Always believe there's another better way of doing things smashing the deadline and continue to take risks in your life and you will go places. Now, how many of you want a BMW? If you were physically with me, I'm sure 90% would have said, I, uh, I want a BMW, right? Am I right? I'm sure I'm right. Uh, now, if you want a BMW, don't be a BMW. What does that mean? If you want a BMW, don't be a BMW. Don't ever, ever, ever get into bitching, moaning, and wailing. BMW, bitching, moaning, wailing. You know, in many times in your life, you'll be having tough times, right? Things won't go where rightly. Or some of your colleagues might make it difficult for you. Uh, or someone in the family might make it difficult. We have this tendency to say, ye thik nahi hai, wo thik nahi hai, college thik nahi hai, principal thik nahi hai. Uh, chancellor thik nahi hai, government thik nahi hai, central government thik nahi hai, keep tripping, boring, in, in, I, in Mumbai, this took out, put tik tik karta hai. I'm sure, right? There will be amongst you friends, some people who are normally, or your friends who keep doing chik chik, ye thik nahi hai, wo thik nahi hai. Stay away from them. They are poison. They are poison. They will only take you one way down, right? Because they are like crabs. They just take the lifeblood energy. You've got to find a way to find something positive in every situation, right? When you're having the toughest day of your life, even when you got a massive scolding from your parents, you've got to say, I'm having fun. And then figure out what that fun is, which means what learning have you got from the situation? So if you are going to let this negative energy come into you, you are no chance of being successful, guaranteed, right? The leaders are the guys who are the most optimist. And, and I know there's this, I know I'm a realist. No, sorry. You have to be an optimist, right? You have to be looking at the brighter side of every situation, everything in life. And that's when you will then be able to, uh, I can promise you, if you can take that negative energy. So negative energy keeps coming in, right? A bad thought can come to you. Sometimes if it's a guy or a friend of yours who's saying, ye thik nahi, wo thik nahi, you say, BMW. He's like, where, where, you, you, right? But if it's uh, inside you, that negative thought is coming, you have to put yourself in a position to subtract yourself, say, hey, I know a negative thought is coming into my mind. You have to be conscious. You have to be conscious of that negative mind and then say, I'm going to pluck it and chuck it. Pluck it and chuck it. If you can do that, friends, I can guarantee you, you will get your BMWs and if some people of you like your Ferraris or your Mercedes or whichever car you dream of, uh, and whatever you dream of is going to be possible if you make sure that you remove the BMW, the bitching, moaning, wailing people from your life, including if you're doing it, kill it, right? There's no time. And especially, again, with the pandemic, uh, there's no better situation, right? It's been horrible. It's been tough. Uh, for many of you, I'm sure some of you must have lost your 
near and dear ones. It's been a tough time. You know, uh, some of my staff have passed away, but you've got to make sure that you have a responsibility for the, the, the people who are there and therefore to give your best and therefore never to fall into that pitching, morning wailing trap, right? So if you are going to be able to do that, I can promise you uh, the world is yours uh, for the living. Uh, now, uh, so that's my number four. Um, I, I, I'm going to have just two more and then I leave it. If you want to ask questions or you want to keep it open, I, I leave it to that. My fifth one is world-class basics, right? I believe, uh, you know, you this is your first step into uh, HSNC and it's very, very vital that you think every day, how can I improve myself? How do, can I become a better version of myself? Uh, I used to play rugby for India. I'm sure you've uh, heard of rugby. I was uh, part of Bombay Jimkhana. We used to play in international rugby tournaments. And, you know, before every match, we would go into a huddle. Right? That huddle was, I'm sure you know. And my, uh, my captain was uh, a person you might have heard of called Rahul Bose. He's an actor. So Rahul would pep us up. You know, he would say before, uh, so rugby is a physical contact sport, right? You have to tackle your opponent. Right? You, it's, it's hard you have to tackle. Many people break bones. So I would advise, uh, unless you've got a really crazy risk-taking ability to uh, be careful. Uh, but it's a great sport. It's my best uh, sport, uh, which I've enjoyed the most in my life. So now he would be get into the huddle and he said, I want to hit the guy hard. Hit him so hard that we can hear bone scrunch. It's amazing to hear bone scrunch if it's not yours. I'm joking. Right? But why? Because in rugby, the, the, like football is a game of passing, right? Accurate passes. Rugby is a game of possession. Along with the possession, the higher probability you're going to win. So to get possession, you have to tackle your opponent very hard so that he makes that slight error. The next time he's running to you, he's going to have that slight fear in his eyes. And that's what's going to make him, you know, essentially uh, do a mispass or a misstep. And that's when you uh, get the opportunity to win possession, right? So in the game of life, you've got to get possession and you've got to make sure that you uh, continuously improve yourself, right? You've got to be, it's what Kaizen, uh, the Japanese call Kaizen, the concept of continuous improvement every day. How can I get better? How can I get better so that I am going to be improving myself? And, and with the uh, advent of technology, now you have so many things you can actually study online. I know it's not ideal, but you might be passionate. Today, I know people are learning how to get the piano online. People are learning how to do some amazing cooking online, right? So you can pick your passion and uh, start improving, right? Go into self-learning courses. There's Coursera, there's edX. These are excellent platforms where you can actually invest in yourself. Because remember, you are only responsible for the investment in your life, right? Next, you're at the starting journey, okay? of your five year and how can you at the end of five year create this gorgeous pitch? What do I call the pitch? What is a pitch? I, I'm sure you know, uh, if you don't know uh, the elevator pitch, imagine you're in an elevator. In that elevator, you have Mr. Ratan Tata, who I'm very, very fond of. Uh, you have, let's say, Jeff Bezos of Amazon. You have Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook and you have Elon Musk of Tesla. And you're in this elevator, you're going in and they all know each other. So they ask you, uh, you know, X, Y, Z, what's, tell me something about yourself. What are you gonna say? What are you gonna say that is gonna make you rock it in that 30 seconds or two minutes that you get? What can you say in your pitch? It has to be amazing, awesome, phenomenal, right? It, it should just blow your mind. Now, I'm sure many of you have already done a lot in your, up to your 10th in terms of extracurricular activities, sports, music, dance, drama. But this is that five-year window where you can take it to the maximum, right? So I will actively ask you to participate, participate, participate in anything and everything. And if you keep participating and if you keep, uh, you know, um, um, contributing and into your development in the process, you'll keep getting better and better and you'll win some great prizes for 
you know, your college, whether it's KC, whether it's uh, HR, whether it's BTT. So I really think I, I use my five years in HR very, very, um, you know, I think that that was the time I just completely took off. What did I do? I played tennis for HR. I played, uh, I was uh, in Maharashtra state level athletics for HR. I represented the HR football team, uh, cricket team, uh, uh, and then I, uh, swimming team, uh, and then I think even table tennis, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not sure. So, you know, some of you might be sport, sports inclined like I was. Some of you might be drama. You know, you've got to win the trophy uh, at Malhar, right? If you're great at drama, music, dance, you've got to just go all out, right? Because that is what will open up your uh, entire personality. These, these opportunities where you compete in intercollegiate events, that's what's going to make you shine. Remember, in the corporate world from where I come from, uh, what we are looking for is not the 98 percentile. I'm willing to take a lower percentile, but if I has excelled uh, or the girl has excelled in extracurricular activities, then you you make up, right? So uh, please make sure this five years. And then I was very happy. Uh, I was uh, uh, you know vice chairman of the students council. Uh, I was the PSDS, uh, public speaking and debating society secretary. I was some three other secretaries. What I'm trying to say is that's what you've got to do. So just make sure, put your, like, you know, like Arjun, put your uh, heart on that particular sport, that particular event, that particular dance, music, drama, whatever excites you and just go for it. And I'm sure uh, you, will, you will excel. So I would really say, make sure that you don't lose this opportunity. Many people at, because I'm a business school, right? Uh, at the end of the school, we hire uh, students for our MBA programs and they go all over the world. And, and that's one thing which is missing in many colleges around the country. Uh, you know, I visit 70 universities every year and I see that there's zero extracurricular and that's it. You could get 80, 90 percentile, but you're not going to make the cut. So I'm just saying, please don't lose this five years. Give it a lot. Dream a lot. Make sure you uh, dream big. Uh, have bhags. You know what is bhags? Big, hairy, audacious goals, right? Make sure. Uh, and the best thing is there's no tax on uh, on on uh, this. So please really dream the biggest things. Uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, it's only up to you to leap up and take, take, take the world, fly like eagles. And I'm sure you'll do very, very well. Uh, I had a dream once. Uh, you know, I wanted to, my boss had a Lexus car. And I was like, ek bar, ek bar. I just want to sit on a Lexus just to see what, you know, my bum will feel on a two crore car. Uh, that was a dream when I was uh, in HR college. Uh, you know, when I came back as uh, the youngest chairman and managing director of Thomson Reuters, I was given a Lexus SUV. So what I'm saying is dream like anything and it's going to happen. It's just up to you. Uh, the, the world conspires to make it happen. So if you can just follow these four or five things I've told you, I'm certain you're going to do well. I'm, I'm just going to spend a 30 seconds on uh, Universal Business School. So this was my dream. Um, again, just a dream one evening in New York. I said, I want to set up a business school. And uh, that's what we have here. Uh, it's uh, now been uh, nearly 12, 13 years. And we have um, you know, partnered with the best universities in the world. Uh, we focus on completely experiential uh, learning and transformation. So um, we've had some tremendous success. We attract students from 20 countries around the world. And my students are working in 20 countries around the world. Um, so would be delighted to, uh, in Dr. Pooja's world, uh, my, I have had many HRs and KC students come and study here. So would be delighted to give them a little more extra advantage uh, as Dr. Uh, Pooja requested, because uh, uh, you're finally, uh, we are of the same blood, uh, the HSNC blood, right? So, uh, and we, we work for each other. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I don't know if you want questions, I'm open to them or however you'd like to run the program. Uh, so we already have uh, one question on the chat box. The question is by Siddharth Bhatia. So how did you start planning out your further education and career with while in college? 
Great question. So, uh, you know, what I always say is start with the end goal. I, we tend to take the next step and then the next step and the next step. And then that's also fine, but it's incremental. But if you say, you know, uh, I, you're, you're let, uh, you know, I, I guess you're, there's so many different fields, right? Whether it's science, whether it's uh, arts, whether it's commerce, whether it's management, what is the end goal, right? So I, I, I'll be more comfortable talking about business and entrepreneurship as the end goal for commerce and business management students. Uh, and I'm sure for all other fields, you know, Karan is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, one year senior to mine, what he's done in the world of uh, cinema. So like that, there are professionals in all these fields to say, I want that guy, right? So if I, if you would say, I want to be CEO, because that was my dream, be a CEO. And then it was very clear for me, if I need to be a CEO, of a business manager of a you know international company, or a, I just wanted to be a CEO. I had not thought beyond that. Uh, then I need to hone my business management skills very clearly. Uh, to be CEO, I need to be a leader because you're managing large number of people, right? I was managing fourteen thousand people uh, around in one hundred and thirty six countries. So how do you start managing by doing those events when you're running that uh, festival, right? When you're organizing a festival or or like you're organizing an induction program, it requires thinking, planning, executing, making sure you bring all the voices together in order to deliver. So I think that's one of the things that gets you there, right? So you know that I need to be at the top. I need to acquire leadership skills. So first you say where I want to get to and what are the skill sets that I need, right? I need leadership skills. I need critical thinking. If you're in science, you probably need research skills. Uh, you know, if you're in uh, mathematics or whatever, so that each one will have his skill set, which is there today. Everything is there on the internet. Uh, you can just Google. Once you know that, then you say, okay, how do I kick off these boxes? And that also, I'm very happy. If you would like to ping me, uh, I'll be delighted to, you know, uh, chat with you. So yeah, I'll tell you, you know, you need to do these four or five things, right? It's very simple. You make sure you participate. Make sure you, uh, you know, if you have an interest in, uh, let's say, uh, be public speaking, then be part of the PSDS. If you're interested in arts, drama, be part of this. So give yourself a whole rounded personality. That's first. And then you say, okay, skill sets is one thing, knowledge. How do I acquire my knowledge in that field? And therefore, I would always say uh, you need to aspire to do a master's. Uh, and if uh, even beyond, if you would like to go into the academic field, or even in the corporate world, a PhD. So let's get as much knowledge we can in the area we are in. Let's make ourselves a well-rounded personality and let's acquire the technical skills. So certain things, you know, like dance, it's technical, uh, you know, a, a musical instrument. So you need to make sure you acquire those. And then once you put that together, believe you me, you just uh, step by step, it'll unfold to you. Uh, and you'll be where you want to be uh, at the end of, uh, you know, uh, after you graduate out of uh, HSNC. Okay, so we'll go to the next question. Uh, how did you manage and avoid distraction? Um, so I, you know, I, I had this very clear concept. I work hard, but I party harder, right? So I can bet you nobody amongst you and I'm challenging the students who are two decades younger than me to party the way I do. Uh, we have something called midnight sunrise on our campus. So we party from midnight to sunrise, right? So what I say is when you're working, it's work, right? Then you put your 100% there. When you're partying, you party like mad. When you're on the tennis court, which is my second favorite sport, you play like a, you know, your life depends on it. I'm not saying tennis, you will die. But uh, what I'm saying is, so instead of doing that, I know this, this these things are the problem in life, right? These are the distractions. So, you know, a little bit of distraction never helps. But make sure that you cut a little time out saying, okay, now I want to watch uh, TikTok or Reels. I also watch it. I need a little break. I watch some nice videos, some nice dances. Great. You know, make sure that when you finish your work, then you can do everything. So prioritize, right? Prioritize, prioritize. Keep moving. Now I have to a little time for my sports. I need to keep so much time for my dance or my music or my singing, whatever uh, artistic uh, abilities you have. So just 
take it down and then go all out rather than doing so little of everything and then you're nowhere. Um, so we have 24 hours, right? If I could do uh, all of that, uh, you know, and by the way, throughout my uh, graduation, I was working as well. Uh, I worked for HSBC. That sales job was uh, in my first year uh, BCom. So I could work. I could participate in all of the intercollegiate events. I could, my passion of mountaineering, I kept mountaineering uh, and, uh, you know, uh, didn't do too badly in academics. So HR gave me the best student of the year, uh, which I was very pleased with. Uh, so I think it's all possible. Just to say, okay, I'm going to put it aside. But trust me, I didn't have me then to guide me. I just intuitively did it. Now you have me. So I'm sure, and you have Dr. Pooja, and you have Dr. Bagla. So you have all the rock stars who are going to uh, guide you uh, in this direction. So we go to the last question. What was the biggest hindrance you faced in your career and how did you cope with it? Okay, my biggest challenge was in 2008 when the financial crisis happened. I had raised $90 million of funding to create the world's first FX exchange. And my biggest customers, Bear Stearns, in 2008, because of the financial crisis, when then my other big customer was um, Lehman Brothers, AIG, Morgan Stanley, uh, Barclays, all of these guys just fell over. So we, we had to shut shop, close our offices, fire all our staff. So I had opened offices in Japan, in, in Taiwan, in uh, sorry, Sydney, in uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Southeast Asia. I had to move. So it was a tough moment and I'd lost $90 million. So it was really tough and I felt you know, personally responsible because when you fire staff, you don't enjoy it. But anyway, the markets were ruthless. Uh, Lehman Brothers had fallen over. All the big banks were struggling. So we knew we couldn't survive. Uh, and I said, okay, I'm done with the corporate world. My CEO, Tom Glosser, the global CEO, he said, no, wait a minute. Uh, this is an investment. And I'm like, what? I lost $90 million of his money and he's calling it investment. I taught HR college that where is the investment and where is the loss? It comes to the balance sheet, mein aata hai, right? Uh, so I, I, that, it didn't make sense at that time. Now I know because he, he hired me back as chairman and managing director of Thomson Reuters uh, for South Asia, because I said, I'm setting up a business school and I don't want, uh, you know, this is universal business school is my dream. So he said, do both. And then I'm like, but why me? Because in three years, I made $350 million for him. So now I realize he said that all that loss you had um, is actually an investment. He said that learning, right? Loss, you can look at it loss. You can look at it learning. Back to that point, failure is actually learned. So if you say failed, no problem. Learned, phenomenal. Pesa was soon. And uh, then you bounce back. Wow. To be very honest, sir, your entire session was so energetic. Your energy was ideally very, very contagious, sir. And I'm being very honest. I was sitting for the entire session at the edge of my seat to listen more and more. And I wish we could go on with this lecture a little more and I could answer, you could answer all the other questions. Thank you so much, sir, for ideally magnifying the meaning of hard work and even, you know, never giving up. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And this I'm speaking from the entire HSNC University and the students for taking time from your busy schedule to share your life lessons and examples with all of us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Now I would like to call upon uh, Mr. Justin, sir, Vice Principal of KC College to give the vote of thanks. Uh, Justin, sir, you are not audible. I think Justin, sir, is not able to hear us. Justin, sir? I think he's got a bad. I think Any all online lectures without technical glitches are incomplete. <laughs> Justin, sir. I must say, I must say till the time Justin, sir, comes in. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when I was listening to Tarunji, uh, I can take pride and say the energy 
the the passion the commitment that i see in hrites when they are youngsters and kcites when they are handling these events all all memories came in because hr and kc believes in giving student bodies and we can proudly say that we have more than 60 student bodies in both the colleges and we share our events with each other so that you know we are neighbors so our students go there and their students come here so when he was talking about psds when he was talking about student council and he was talking about forget those people who pull you down i was like this is my young hrite and hsnc university and hsnc board student talking to the other uh, students and he was uh, so so uh, young when he was talking like giving them a senior who has just passed out his graduation is talking to a young uh, junior who is joining the first year i think everything came out as you know it's it's an hr it's speaking from heart and the mantras that you gave them were uh, very very beautiful i think uh, heart touching that you gave them those five years that they are going to live now so you have created those dreams in them that i will look forward to a psds marathi vagme mandal student council this is what the beauty of these two institutions is each faculty is taking care of some or other student body and have a mentorship which is under her or her him some students that they nurture and they bring out leaders in them and this is what hr and kc and hsnc university believe that when you come here you come here with great academics we polish you along with those academics with those skills and feathers that you can use to fly so hr and kc believes in adding those feathers to the students and this is what our philosophy is that we want our stars to fly in the sky and when we look up to them with pride we say these are my stars and tarun ji you are one of those stars that we proudly say you are our star so thank you so much for joining us and giving us your precious moments in the morning we know you're busy you're running a management school but uh, a little greedy uh, again that please invite us to your management institute because we have heard so much from the teachers who have already visited your institution and uh, our students had been a regular visitor i remember uh, two three years oh, back no. kishani was there no, no, no. some of our students had uh, yes so uh, so those have joined in so we would want uh, there was a incident i remember that uh, a student was uh, uh, i think uh, hurt by a crab uh, uh, pinching him and you were in the night supporting these kids i think a support that you gave us as a host the support that you gave us as an alumni is is something that we can proudly say that our star is shining and making hr and kc shine so looking forward to you inviting us uh, and our students and faculty to your institution for yes. that midnight to sunrise party that you will take us there that <laughs> we are looking forward to definitely some brilliant idea that i am taking forward So I think Justin sir has joined us now. He was not able. Justin sir, are you able to hear us? Yeah, yeah, I am able to hear. Am I yeah. audible? Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, respected eminent speaker for the induction program today, Mr. Tarun Anand. Respected vice chancellor and principal of KC College. Respected deans of commerce and humanities, vice principals, colleagues, and students of second batch of. FI HSNC University Indeed it is my honor and privilege to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of HSNC University at the outset my sincere thanks to the eminent speaker Mr Tarun Anand for his enlightening and highly motivating speech In fact I thoroughly enjoyed his speech and I hope all students must have benefited and enriched out of his speech The very good explanation he has given for the concept of the Uh, risk when we said if you take risk you will fail but you will learn i think it is a uh, energetic and enthusiastic speech by a person who has got 25 years of experience in financial services my special thanks to all the teachers technical team and other staff who are instrumenting today's program 
No program will be successful without the participation of students. I would like to acknowledge my sincere thanks to you all for making this induction program a grand success. Thanks, one and all. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all you. the best. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. All the best. Have a Thank nice you. day. And Thank nice you, ma'am. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, everyone present here.